It turns out that mosquitoes carrying the dengue virus are more likely to bite and more often than their peers. Researchers have found that the virus alters mosquito behavior to triple its chance of infecting other hosts. Now, this finding could help scientists develop more effective disease control strategies. And joining us now is Dr. Julien Pompon from the French Institute of Research for Sustainable Development. Oh, you worked on this study with colleagues from Singapore's Duke NUS Medical School. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Pompon. Yeah, uh, hello. Now, for studies like yours to serve their purpose, we do need clear results. Uh, so, you, uh, understandably, this is carried out in a laboratory uh, using, uh, I read in your report, immunocompetent mice. Th that said, you do need, still need to maintain uh, variables that do not distort what they would be in the real natural world. How did you manage this in a lab setting? Yeah, you're right. You need to uh, remove a lot of uh, confounding factors that you find in the field. And for this, you have to be in the lab, in, a, in, the, an, insectary, in an insectary in, the, in this case. And so actually, the, the effect of a virus on a mosquito behavior is an old question that uh, uh, has been tackled for uh, 20 years or so, but with conflicting results. Some studies found that there was a, an impact on the behavior, others that they were not, and some found that there were an impact on certain type of the behavior, others on other types. So we decided with, uh, with colleagues at uh, Duke and US when I was there, uh, with Ashley St. John and Adam uh, Claridge Chung, to tackle this issue and try to settle the case. And for this, we used high resolution video, which had never been used. So with, uh, with these videos, we could picture the mosquitoes in a very close-up uh, format. And then with semi-automated annotation, we were able to exactly time when the mosquitoes were, was doing such and such behavior. And we ended up with a massive amount of data from infected and non-infected mosquitoes, which we analyzed with uh, complex uh, multivariate statistics. And in the end, we had a, a fairly comprehensive uh, a view of the mosquito behavior while biting a mouse uh, if and if the mosquito were, and we compared infected and non-infected mosquitoes. Dr. Pompon, little has been known about how the dengue virus affects the, or subverts the physiology of a mosquito. So are we any closer to understanding how the virus affects the insect's feeding patterns? Yeah, so we still don't know much about uh, the physiology, physiological impact of the virus on, on mosquitoes, as you said. And, and for the behavior, we managed to get a relatively clear answer. And actually, the blood feeding of mosquitoes is separated in two parts. There is first the, uh, what we call the host-seeking part, when the mosquitoes fly towards a human and try to find a suitable human to land on. Uh, until it lands on the skin, it is called the host-seeking part. And we found that the infection by dengue viruses actually increased the attraction to human by these, uh, for these mosquitoes. So that means that the mosquitoes will uh, fly faster to a human, uh, and this is relatively intuitive in terms of uh, what it will do to transmission. If the mosquitoes fly faster, it will this will increase transmission. And then you have the second part, which is the biting part. And for these, it starts when the mosquito inserts its mouth part inside the skin to find blood in the bloodstream. And, uh, and what, what we know is that along this path towards the blood, the mosquitoes releases saliva. And the, the function of this saliva is basically to prevent us from sensing the bite, so the mosquito can accomplish its uh, blood feeding. And, but the problem, the problem is that in these saliva, there are viruses. And importantly, we know now that uh, it's enough for the virus to be released in the skin to, uh, to be transmitted. So you have here two conflicting interests. On one part, the mosquito wants to get to the blood as fast as possible to get some blood so that, so that it has food to lay eggs afterwards. And you have the uh, virus interests, which is that the mosquito bite as many skin as possible. So it doesn't reach to the blood 
because if the mosquito reaches the blood, it will not bite again. So, and the virus interest is that the mosquito bite several people just in the skin. And that is exactly what we observed with our uh, high resolution behavior assay is that the infected mosquitoes will bite the skin, do not reach the blood, and then bite another skin, and so on and so forth. And it will do that three times more than if it was not infected. So, Dr. Pompon, we've got to sum it up. Uh, two points you've made. So, essentially, they're more attracted to hosts if they are infected with the dengue virus, and two, they need to bite more often to get the same amount of nutrition from blood. Uh, how do these findings translate into interventions that we can actually practice to reduce the spread of dengue, say, in Singapore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so dengue is still a problem in Singapore, and, uh, and I think what our study brings is a better understanding of how the virus is transmitted. And if we can understand better how it is transmitted, we can predict better how it is transmitted. And uh, for instance, the, the Singaporean population is well aware that dengue is distributed in clusters. So we know that uh, dengue clusters occur in, are very focal in space and time, and they move on like that on the island. Now we understand how this occurs and probably because one mosquito is able to transmit three times more. So one mosquito can infect at least three people or even more. So this understanding of the epidemiology of dengue uh, reinforces the necessity for focal treatments with either insecticide or a Volvacia-based approach that is uh, under development in Singapore with, uh, by EHI and NEA. Oh, thanks so much for that. Dr. Julien Pompon from the French Institute of Research for Sustainable Development explaining for us how uh, findings from this study can be used to help stop the spread of dengue in Singapore.